Look at that. We're getting rained on. It's raining onions. Oh, there's so many of them coming down at once. Look at that. What's up, everyone? It is Dark Viper. I'm actually a bacon head right now because I'm going to show you all how to play Skyblock. So Skyblock is actually a pretty new game, but it is growing in popularity, I think. Let's see how many players are on right now. It looks like there are 55,000 players on right now. So it's definitely a popular game right now on the front page of Roblox. And it's just super fun. And a lot of players, the one thing I get all the time is, hey, Dark, can you show me how to play the game or how do I play this game? And people have been asking me for a video. So that is why I'm creating this as a bacon head. So I am actually going to show you from start to finish on how to build your base out. So one of the things that you're going to see here is you're going to you're going to see you're on this little tiny island and you do want to get off this island as soon as you can, because that is how you are going to get to sell things and start making money so one of the things here you're gonna see trees trees if you chop down trees you're gonna get wood if you collect berries from bushes you can get money and then this is your little workbench this is where you're gonna craft stuff you're basically gonna craft things on this and then you're gonna to want to pick this up to be able to plow your um, your basically your area that you're gonna um, plant stuff at so if you equip the plow you can see you can click on the grass and it turns brown when the grass is brown that is an area that you can now plant seeds at so you can see right here at the bottom here i've got seeds right so you're going to select your seeds and you're going to plant it all around um you're going to start growing wheat and see this is the end result right here i already have some wheat that i can take to the marketplace as soon as i get out of that portal and get into town so here's what we're going to do so i'm going to go ahead and take my pickaxe and that's how you start breaking stuff up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a path from here to there to be able to get out so i'm going to go ahead and break this stone up and as soon as i break the stone up just like minecraft it's going to go in your inventory and so this game is actually inspired by a minecraft mod i think it's called a mod i don't know if it's a mod or not but it is based on hypixel's uh, skyblock and there's also a couple other skyblock versions as from what i've what i've been told all right we're at 20 now so i'm going to go and build my build bridge across if i need more i can always um use the pickaxe for more definitely don't do that if you do do it just chop it up again bring it back in your inventory all right so let's go ahead and do this so after I'm done with these basics here, I'm actually gonna go over to my other account. I'm gonna show you how to make auto miners. So if you're curious, like, hey, Dark, yeah, I already know how to play, but I, I need how to know how to create my own mines. Well, I'll show you how to do your own mines. It's all good. So you can also break up the, the grass if you want. It's a little easier to break up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to finish my bridge. So now that we're in the lobby, we can actually do a couple things. One of the things you're gonna see here on the right is a baker, which you don't really need to worry about yet, but that's a little bit more advanced. So you can actually make food and stuff, but I don't even do that. It's not really required. So you don't have to like worry about bakers. The blocks, this is actually a pretty important merchant. So you can basically buy different types of blocks from this guy and you can also sell some of them. So if it says buy, you can only buy them. If it says sell, you can only sell them. So you can't buy iron, you can't buy wood. Um, you have to chop that down and grind that yourself, but you can buy grass. You can buy glass panes. The one that you're going to want to pay attention to are probably these two for buying and then selling. I really wouldn't bother selling anything. Um, I really wouldn't. I would keep all this stuff. I wouldn't even bother selling it. So just, you know, you probably want to only think about grass and glass in this one. And then over here is where you're going to do most of your work. This is where you do your business. So you're going to sell your crops. So I'm going to go and click on him and we're going to sell our wheat that we just um, pulled from our farm. And you can click the all button so that it shows how much um, shows pretty much it selects everything that's in your inventory. And then it shows how much you're going to get. So I'm going to get 55 coin from that. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over here and I'm going to go to the, um, the seed seller and he can actually sell you saplings for your trees if you want to plant more trees he can also sell you grape seeds you don't have to worry about that yet onions are going to be the best so if you really really want the best um, seed in the game this is what all of us are using to farm the most coin and then uh, since we're starting out i'm going to go ahead and say let's uh, we're going to save up for, for some carrot seeds in a bit you can go and buy if you really want to you could buy wheat seeds but carrot seeds is really the nice middle grounds the carrots aren't as expensive as the onion seeds they're 200 i would say they're pretty good because you can get four seeds for one of these and if you look at it how much you can get for selling them is pretty pretty interesting right here you're going to get 25 for the carrots but you're only going to get 30 for onions so why would i want to go straight to onions if i can get 25 already it's only a five coin difference right so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to buy 
your carrot seeds. So that's what we're going to farm first. You don't have to worry about totems either. I'm going to show you how to do totems in a little bit on my other account. So let's assume we're going to go back to our base. We're going to farm some wheat for a little bit. And we're 40 coins richer. The other thing you could do while we're waiting is you can go out to the mine. So over here is where you actually get your metals. So you're going to get your coal here, which is what you use to burn stuff. And I'm going to show you how to use the furnace in a little bit. So we got a little bit of coal here. And then you have over here, you're going to look for rock. So this is just plain old ro rock, like kind of what we already uh, had at our base. But what you really want is iron. Iron is pretty much what you're going to use for the majority of advanced builds. Now you're probably curious, okay, what about killing stuff? Well, you could go into the adventure area, but you do need a weapon first. So you're going to have to craft a sword. And then in order to be able to go in this area, you're going to need to buy a key, an adventure key, which you can buy from this guy. They do cost um, 200 coins, so I could technically buy one now, but I wouldn't have a sword, so don't bother in this area. In fact, here's some, finally, I finally found some iron here. So this is iron. You can see it's got like the little extra iron stones inside of it. You def definitely just want to farm that, and then you can see I've got some, I've got four iron ore. Well, this is useless. I can't use it until I heat it up. So I got to heat it up to smelt it into iron in order to be able to use it. So I'm going to go back to my base. I'm going to check my uh, little wheat farm here, see how it's going. We're also going to pick some berries if we have a chance to. It looks like they're not ready yet. And then we're going to go and replant these guys. And sometimes you get a little extra wheat seeds, by the way. So yeah, they're not ready yet. Okay. So we're going to go back. Now I do want to show you how to craft. So in here is your work, your basic workbench. The first thing you're going to want to build is a um, workbench tier two whenever you can. But you could also build this guy. The campfire is pretty cheap and that is only 10 wood. So I'm going to go and chop down 10 wood and we can go and build this. So that way we can start smelting some iron. Okay, so we're going to go and harp, make our um, campfire now. Now that we have it, we can go and place it anywhere you want. We'll just keep it over here. So in order to smelt this iron, we're going to go ahead and drop on the campfire some wood to be able to have some fuel and we're gonna drop in some iron ore. Now, we might run out of wood, so I'm gonna go, there we go. So I got one iron ore. Now, if I wanna keep going with that, ooh, I have my berries. If I wanna keep going with that, I gotta get some wood. So I'm gonna wait for the wood to pop up and let's go see if I can make a sword yet. So I need 20 wood to make a sword. So I'm gonna start essentially working on this so that I can harvest or farm some uh, slime while we wait. Now, slime do give you coin so if you can heart if you could grind slime you can actually get a lot of coin doing that all right how much wood do i have i have 11 i need 20. all right i think we have enough wood now so we're gonna go and make that sword so now i have a sword i can go grind some slimes with so while we wait for our wheat to grow i'm gonna go and grind some slimes now a key is gonna cost you 200 but you're gonna make that pretty quick with the slime balls so you can see here, I can actually sell different types of slime balls. They, they give you different amounts of coins. So the pinks, you want to definitely grind those because they give you 300 coin. And they're pretty easy to kill. You just, they, they, don't, they don't spawn very often. But now I've got my key. I'm going to go ahead and go through the portal. Now you're not going to, you're going to want to be careful in here. You do not want to die or else that 200 is wasted. But you can see here, there's a blue. So let's go after blue right away. Now, one of the things, the, the strategy for this in particular is it's pretty simple. So they're going to start coming at you. What you're going to want to do is try to kite them. So you can see here, you need to stay, keep a good distance, be, you know, between you and them and just make sure they can't, as long as you're, you know, like attacking them, keep that distance. And this is called kiting. Kiting is a, a tactic where you just keep your, keep a particular distance from something and make it so they can't uh, reach you. Now you just saw, I just got one blue slime ball just from that. And that's a bit of money already in my pocket. These guys are pretty common. So the green slimes are pretty common. Again, you do not want to let these things touch you. You will lose health and you cannot re regenerate health. Like you, it, you have to eat stuff in order to heal. And unless you brought food with you, you're probably going to die. And you can actually handle all three of these pretty easily, just like I am. Just make sure you're clicking on them. You can't you can't just hit them with the sword. You just need, I mean, your sword's gonna reach pretty far. See, these like these are ranged. These are technically like it's it's like you're a wizard. You're like a Jedi with a sword from a distance. You can see I'm actually damaging them. As long as it's flashing red, I'm damaging these guys. So just make sure you're clicking on the cubes. You're gonna get you're gonna be just fine. You can see I've already I've already like earned a ton of money just from doing this. 
So this is a really good way for you to uh, grind coin while your stuff's growing and while you're waiting for things to work out. Sorry, I've already made a lot of money. I might actually, if I recall, I think, I think these give you like either 50 or 100. I'll have to check to see how much coin it gives you. I just got another, oh, I got a green sticky gear. Now, green sticky gears are actually a crafting item. So if you wonder like, Dark, what do I do with this green sticky gear? Well, just, just keep it. And when you need to actually use it for crafting, then you can use it then. See, I just got a blue one as well. Blue ones will help you make, if I recall correctly, blue ones give you, isn't it industrial? I think it's the industrial saw or I can't remember. I used it once and I think it's the saw or it's the cooker. It's the food cooker. Which one? Is, I think it's the saw. I'll double check in a minute. I see another blue just spawned up there too. So we're going to go grab that and see if we can get some, we can get some good for it. Ooh, another blue. Wow. It's, it's a lucky day. Lots of blues. Usually it's really rare to see blues spawn and we're getting super lucky with all these blues coming out. They may have increased the odds for them to spawn because they used to be really rare. I used to have to kill like, you know, maybe 30 for a blue or 20 for a blue to spawn. And they're just spawning without me doing much. Ooh, we got three of them on me right now. All right, let's go ahead and, and by the way, if you are on PC, you can just hold down shift and it'll help you sprint. Mobile users, you're kind of out of luck there. They don't have sprint for mobile yet. All right, so you can go back to the adventurer now and you can sell these. So I'm gonna go ahead and sell all of these. I got 150 coin from my green slime ball. I have five of these. You can see I already have 500. So easy money, right? Imagine if we had a bunch of pink slime balls, man. We'd have so much money. So now I have enough to go buy some carrots. Now I could just grind that all night. And when my main account didn't work and I had to use an alt, I actually did earn about 20,000 that night on slimes alone. So if you're telling me you need money or you can't generate money because you don't have stuff, just go out there and grind. You can do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy my seed that I was looking for. I need one of them. I can't afford more than one, I don't think, because my wallet right now only has 224. I could buy though another wheat seed because I have 125 now, so that's pretty good. Now, if you really wanted to, you could do tomatoes, but if you look at tomatoes, look at what they sell for. They only sell for eight, whereas like your carrots are 25 and wheat's five. Well, tomatoes are just aren't that different from wheat. The only thing that I like about tomatoes is I felt like I got more extra seeds at times from them. So. I don't know if that's true, but I did notice I was getting a lot more seeds, free seeds from them. So I was able to grow crops very quickly with it, but I think I saw the same thing from wheat. So I, I just haven't tested that out yet. So let's go ahead and farm this. Let's go ahead and plant our carrot. So you can see a little carrot um, seed right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plant my wheat, my wheat, wheat, wheat. There's my wheat. All right, wheat is planted. So all my stuff's planted. So inside your crafting table, one of the things you're really gonna wanna prioritize next is the workbench tier two. This is a little challenging to get. Look how much iron you need. You need 50 iron, you need 50 stone, and you need 50 wood. This is a little bit of a grind when you're a bacon head. Trust me, it's a bit of a grind. Um, the next thing though, after workbench tier two, you could look at upgrading your fireplace, your campfire to a small furnace if you really wanted to. But what I would recommend is, you know, this is kind of cheese. So if, if, if you if you want to solo this without any help, then you're going to have to do this on your own. You're just going to have to grind it out. But if you have friends who play this game, just ask if they have an extra smelter. Trust me, they probably have one if they're playing this game. A lot of people are, you know, helping each other out with them. You might be able to get one from a friend. If you can't, then you're just going to have to grind this out and I would highly recommend getting a small furnace for a while because a small furnace will actually help you quite a bit. All this other stuff is just straight up decor. You like you don't need another basic workbench, why would you? One of the things you're going to want to do with your workbench tier 2 as soon as you can is also craft an anvil. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my other account and show you all how to progress from this stage just to accelerate things because this is going to take a while to make this tutorial. So, I'm going to go and basically show you what's next as if I was a bacon noob and uh, had a little bit of money on me to be able to buy and craft the things I needed to do. So, after you've built your workbench tier 2, the first thing you're going to want to do is build an anvil. That's the only thing you need to worry about. Ignore everything else. Don't get don't get drawn by these little decor things. You don't need any of this stuff. What you need is an anvil. So as soon as you craft your anvil, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your anvil and you're gonna hit F on it to see what you can build. 
So in here, you can actually build an iron axe and guess what? A steel rod. Now the steel rod does require 25 iron and 10 coal. So you're gonna be out there farming quite a bit, right? Well, here's here's the thing that's pretty cool. So if you go out there, let's go back out to the lobby and let's, let's not pay attention to my base. Don't worry about that, I'll show you that later. Give you the tour later, okay? So if you come out here, you'll notice this guy over here, Totems. So you don't wanna have to come out here all the time when you're trying to get iron, right? Like imagine trying to compete with this person right here for iron. Like you would be so mad because they keep stealing your iron ore, right? They're still, they just go around stealing your rocks. It's gonna be super annoying. You're not gonna wanna deal with that. So what you're gonna wanna do is save up for a totem for a coal totem and an iron totem. As soon as you, I'm gonna go and do that right here. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna buy an iron totem. It is 4,000 coins. Like I said, you just, I just showed you how to earn 500 coin. 4,000 coin is not hard to earn in this game. Just go grind slimes and harvest all your carrots over and over and over until you have enough coin to buy these. So you're gonna buy iron and then you're gonna buy a coal. That's all you need. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come back to your base with those totems and then you're going to put them anywhere you want. I'm just gonna put them here so you're not distracted with my base because it is very distracting. And I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff out of my inventory so that's not distracting. And so I'm gonna show you here the coal and the iron, okay? So this, these are the two things you just bought. So I'm gonna place this here. I'm gonna place this here and what you're gonna notice is it's gonna start um, spawning giant rocks, right? So I'm gonna grab my pickaxe. So I'm gonna wait for them and what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna farm here for a bit because at this point you don't have enough for conveyor belts you don't have anything like that you only had enough to buy these two totems so just wait a little while and you're going to start seeing that they're going to start spawning some cool rocks in your base so you no longer have to go out to the other area so here's a, here's some coal i'm going to go and farm that and then here's some iron so you're going to be able to do this for a while and once you have enough what you're going to do is you're going to save up enough material to start making your own your own workbench tier tier three. So in order to be able to make a workbench tier three, you do need these steel rods. So again, what you're doing is you're gonna be farming that coal and iron in order to make these steel rods. Steel rods are pretty much the core component for anything, even as an advanced player. I need a lot of steel rods because I need steel rods to be able to make conveyor belts. So you can see over here, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a preview of what that looks like. So over here, I've got my tier three workbench. See all these things, see all these things that say steel rod, you're gonna need to be able to make those. So steel is, so iron is pretty, pretty important. So again, you're really just gonna be farming iron and coal for a while. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here once you have enough and you're going to start looking at what it's gonna take to make a workbench tier three because you do need 20 steel rods. Once you have that, start working on your stone brick. Maple wood's gonna be a little bit more challenging for you because that means you're gonna have to buy a sapling for maple. Those do cost a little bit of coin. It's not too bad. At this stage, you can you, you should be doing pretty well. But especially if, as long as your farm's still growing and you're still upgrading, you're still planting carrots and you're still planting wheat if you need to or tomatoes, whichever you prefer, it's up to you. So in order to get the workbench tier three, again, you need the steel rods, you need stone brick. Well, you're like, well, I can just go get stone, right? Well, wrong. You need stone in order to, um, make these bricks, but you also need a stone cutter. So the stone cutters look like this, and they cost 40 iron. They're pretty cheap, and if you think about it, especially if you're out there making iron, they're not bad, it just does, it does cost a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down, I'm gonna go and craft that and show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna run over here, I'm gonna put it next to my anvil. And so over here, you're just gonna push, um, you're gonna use some coal, and you're gonna push some um, stone through it. And so once you've done that, these are gonna turn into stone bricks. And that's all that is. So you just need to do this a bunch of times. So it's not hard. And you should have plenty of stone if you don't just take it away from your base or go get another totem. You, there's actually stone totems, which I have a couple of here. I'll show you. So these are stone totems and they will drop large stone blocks. Now it's kind of an eyesore and you really don't, I don't need them. So I'm gonna take it away, but it's basically the same concept as these, and they're pretty cheap. I think they're cheaper than, I think they're cheaper than the iron and the coal. So you should be good there. Now, once you have the stone, you're gonna need the maple. 
right? So you can see here it says maple wood, you need 20 of it. That's not much. You could ask someone for it if you really, you could buy it from someone if you really wanted to, if you didn't want to have to deal with the trees. But I'm gonna tell you, just go over to the seed guy again, go all the way to the lobby and buy a maple tree. So the maple tree looks like this, it's orange. It does cost a thousand coin, but I'm gonna go and purchase one. I already have a bunch of them, but I'm just gonna show you what you need to do. So you take your sapling and you're just gonna plant it somewhere and then you're gonna wait for it to grow. Now, once it's grown, you're gonna want to switch over to your ax and you're gonna cut it down, right? And you only need 20, it's pretty easy. So maple wise, say I have, so once you're done, you're gonna come over here and build your workbench tier three. Here's what it looks like again. And you're gonna wanna build a conveyor belt right away. So that is the next step you're gonna take. You're gonna build two conveyor belts. And this is why, I'm gonna show you why. This is how cool they are. So see these ugly eyesores over here? These things that you've been having to sit here and do all the work and pickaxe and you're so tired of doing this. I'm already tired of doing this. I'm done with it. I'm so tired of doing it. But instead of having to do this over and over, what you do is you take two conveyor belts that you just made, which cost, if you look, they cost uh, steel rods, I believe. Let me see, let's go back over here, right here. They cost steel rods and iron. So I'm gonna craft it and then I'm gonna come run over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one next to each of these. Let's sit it right here. So see the arrows on the conveyor belt? That's the direction it's gonna go. I don't really want it going this way. So you, if you build something, even with the totems, if you build something, you can just do that to take it back and it'll put it back in your inventory and you can replace it. So don't worry, you're not gonna delete it. And then there you go. So what you're gonna see now is the next time it spawns this stuff, it's just gonna drop. See, I can just pick them up. Boom, boom. I don't have to use my pickaxe anymore. Now they do despawn after a minute or when there's a hundred of them. So if you see one of those roll out, you've got 60 seconds to pick it up unless you have more than a hundred. If you have more than a hundred entities out, so if you have a hundred of those things rolling out, they're gonna start um, immediately despawning while they're coming out. So you just have to be mindful of the game's limitations. You see, I just basically farm like this. Now the next step I would recommend is where we're starting to get closer to the auto farm, right? The next thing you want is one of these. See these industrial chests? Here's what's cool about them. I'm gonna show you what you can do with them. And then I'm gonna show you how to make them. So you're gonna get one of these industrial chests and you're gonna place it right in front of, and it has to be connected. You can't just put this, you can't just do this in front of a totem. It won't work. You have to do it on a conveyor belt. So you have to connect it to a conveyor belt. And again, making sure the arrows are pointing in. <laughs> if these arrows are going the other way, they're just gonna keep coming out. So you point it into this guy. And then what you'll notice is now that I've placed this, it's gonna start automatically storing as soon as it places, watch. It's pretty cool. All right, so two coal just went in. There's my two coal. Now I can also change the direction. What if I wanted to feed something else like I could just change the direction and now it's coming out right and I can make it go back in so that's interesting for some later builds I'm going to show you there's some advanced builds for cooking and auto like auto uh, stone cutting and things like that you can do all of that using chess so I would basically just drop my materials in and it would spit them out of there and it would just go down the conveyor belt and cook so there's different techniques for that um, and so here's how you build it so Chests are kind of expensive. They're, they're kind of pricey. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna show you what the cost is. So in order to be able to, be able to make an industrial chest, you do need a medium chest and conveyor belt and iron. So we already have a conveyor belt. Um, you're gonna to need to make more of them. We know that they're cheap, right? So they're just basically steel rods and iron. But to make a medium chest, you need 50 wood planks and 30 iron. It's a little costly because now you're gonna to have to go and chop down a bunch of trees to be able to get enough wood to make one medium chest and you gotta have some iron here, so you need 30 iron, which you're already collecting anyway, right? You should be over just sitting there, over there collecting it. And then you gotta cook it, which is a bummer. But now you come over here and you're gonna be able to combine that medium chest with the conveyor belt and the extra 30 iron on top of that to make an industrial chest. Now it's worth it because what happens is while you're building your base, this stuff's still farming. Look at, there's five already in here. So it can store up to, what is it, uh, 10, 40. It can store up to 40 um, different pieces in each of these industrial chests. 
Now there's other builds you can do. So like if you want to do like a split um, in store, like if you want a multiple storage chest, so if this one fills up, you can do another one. There's a lots of different builds for that. Next piece though, so say you've already advanced, you're like dark, yeah, yeah, well past that. Okay, well now I'm gonna show you something a little bit more advanced that I'm sure you're looking forward to because it's really, really cool. So I'm gonna show you the start of something crazy here. So if you look at this chest, it's full of onions, right? So I'm just gonna go and pull this away. Now we're just gonna sit here and look how fast it's filling up. See, I'm not doing anything. That's my farm working by itself. Here's how I built mine. There are a lot of builds out there and my place is currently a mess. Let me tell you, it is, it is, it's messy. I know it because I've been reworking it and I'm rebuilding it. So it is quite the mess right now, but I want to show you something. So check this out. Okay. So you can see here, look at all these things. So it's going to auto harvest. You just saw that the onion just disappeared, right? That's because it's what it's doing is it's harvesting it automatically and replanting seed and it's putting it on the conveyor belt. It looks like that guy's stuck. I don't know why it's stuck, but you can see all of these, as long as they're connected to a conveyor belt, they're going to drop whatever they harvest onto that conveyor belt. And it's going to drop wherever I have it pointing to. So I actually have multiple layers of this going on, right? And what they're doing is they're dropping it straight into this hole. And then all of this, I'm going to just going to, I'm going to go ahead and break this down so you can see what's inside. These are all coming in. I'm just going to go and collect these because I don't like seeing them wasted. So you can see I have down here, it drops down. You can see it falling on us. Well, uh, we're getting rained on. It's raining onions. Oh, there's so many of them coming down at once. Look at that. Jeez, we're getting piled on. We're getting piled. We're getting buried. So basically what you're seeing here is there's a conveyor belt down here. I'm going to go ahead and break this so you can see it. And so the conveyor goes and feeds into it just like the other. It's just like the other one. And that's it. It's a pretty simple build. It's not complicated. You don't really need help with it. You might need the materials. And so the materials did take me a while. Um, I will tell you that what I did initially is I started out, you could start out with wheat if you really need to. I started out with carrots. So almost all of these were carrots. And what I did, and the reason why I go into one single chest is I can sit here and auto click, right? So I can run an auto clicker on this. I, I earn right now, if I auto clicked all night, I could earn about, if I auto clicked all night, I would earn about 40,000 onions. And so imagine how much money I'm making in one night if I did it. Now, I've only done it a few times because I don't really need that much money. Um, same thing for iron. So I'll show you my iron um, farm. So iron is similar. You see it's full right now. I only have a couple machines running right now because I just don't need iron anymore. So I turn them off because this game, like I said, there are uh, limits. So if you have farms, and there is, okay, let me, let me step back there are limits to the number of entities you can have out. So if there are loose onions rolling around your farm, those add up to the hundred allowed by autos. So if you have more than a hundred of these, so like this one counts, if you have more than a hundred, then they're going to start despawning you. So if you had a long farm, if you had a farm with a conveyor belt that wrapped all the way around here, the time that those entities are out is basically limiting your farm. If you, if you understand what I'm saying is in any, any of these things that are creating automatically these entities, they're going to start despawning on your conveyor belt because you've met, you've reached the limit. You've reached the limit of a hundred. And on top of that, the longer something takes to get around. So, so, so say if the server's lagging really bad and it takes more than 60 seconds for an object to get around on your conveyor belt, it's going to despawn before it gets to your chest. So that's why you're seeing these tower concepts is because the amount of time that for something to travel is within seconds and it's immediately in this chest. So you're not having entities out unnecessarily. So you're going to get a lot more farm per second than you would if you did a stacked like large area. So if you had a large area that was stacked and it was it looked, it looked more like this, this used to be my old farm. When I say despawn, if that's confusing, despawn basically means the onion disappears before it even reaches to the chest. You need to be really mindful of making sure those things are getting out and into something like a storage chest right away. What I do for the iron, same thing. So for iron automation, you're basically going to make sure you have enough uh, conveyor belts. And so in order to do an automated iron with the smelter, to set up your smelter, you're gonna need at least one coal and you're gonna want, um, I would say three iron. So you're gonna want three iron totems. You can do less, you need at least one of each. 
in order for the thing to operate because you need your fuel, which is your coal, and you also need iron, which is what you're smelting, right? Otherwise it's pointless. So I would put one of these here. So that's my coal. Let's see where my other, my, here's my iron. So I'm gonna plant two irons and I'll show you how it operates. So I already have one over here operating that I can show you. So you can see I've only got two totems on right now because I actually sold a lot of money. I, I kind of give them away a lot too. So you can see inside here, it's using the iron ore and it's using the coal and it's gonna actually um, drop the bricks into a similar setup. Again, it's just going, it's auto feeding into this. So same principle here as everything else. You just come back here and that's why I've got so much iron. I, like I said, I kind of gave up on farming that because I don't need it. So I'm actually going to be rebuilding my base soon. Um, what's one of the fun things you're going to see if you're new to Skyblock is you're going to see a lot of fun obbies. Most of us will actually go and do like little mini competitions at our bases so you can, you know, kind of experience our own obbies that we create. So there's a lot of raging going on during our live streams because people get mad because they can't beat the obbies. So a lot of the times what we'll do is we'll give away coin if people uh, beat our obbies and stuff. The other thing you can do is crazy builds like what I did back here is I actually created the Skyblocks, um, the highest tower ever made because you know what? After I did this and broke my game, they actually patched the, uh, the game's uh, basically max height. So you can't go this high anymore. You can't, like I can't even build up there anymore. So I can't even remove it if I wanted to. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be the highest tower ever made in Skyblock Roblox, which is really, really cool. Um, I actually run little competitions where I have people go all the way to the top of the tower, which is, I can't even see the top right now. It's not even that. It's like not rendering right now. I have them go all the way to that and then I have them drop down to this little platform, which is hilarious because they always fall off and stuff. But Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see y'all next time. And good luck in Skyblocks. Peace.